So when we got the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra for review, the very first thing that I wanted to do was actually test the performance of the new Exynos 2100 chip. Now we needed a Snapdragon 888 phone, but unfortunately none of those are available in India yet. But fortunately we have one in China and that is the Mi 11. So this is the first retail phone with Snapdragon 888 and we went out of our way to actually source it and find out which one of these two flagship chips actually will be the best chip for Android phones in 2021. My name is Rashad, you're watching My Smart Price English. Let's get this video started. But before we move on, we're putting in all the effort to ensure that you guys get the best tech content out there. So you know what, in case you want to support us, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever my smart price English puts out an awesome new tech video. First, let's take a look at the spec differences between the Exynos 2100 and the Snapdragon 888. Both are based on the five nanometer fabrication process. Now the prime core is based on Cortex-X1 and on, you know, the Snapdragon 888, it's actually called uh, Cryo uh, 680. It is clocked higher on Exynos 2100 at 2.9 gigahertz compared to 2.84 gigahertz on the Snapdragon 888. The sub cores are also clocked higher on the Exynos 2100. The main differences are definitely the GPU. On the Exynos 2100, you get a Mali G78 and on, uh, you know, the uh, Snapdragon 888, you get Adreno 660, uh, you know, GPU, which we will, of course, test in due course. Now for the testing process of the synthetic benchmark and of course, uh, you know, the real world benchmark as well, we match the brightness levels on both the displays. We set the Wi-Fi to the same network and the display is set at FHD plus and 120 Hertz resolution. Now we start off with Geekbench 5 and you can see that they are very similar scores. The Mi 11 scores higher than the S21 Ultra in single core tests and the S21 Ultra actually scores higher on multi-core. But these numbers can actually change after multiple runs, so these are not set in stone, so uh, do remember that. And now we move on to the 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme Test, which is basically a graphics test. In this, you can see that in the OpenGL test, uh, the Mi 11 with Snapdragon 888 actually performs better than, you know, the Exynos 2100 inside the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. The scores are definitely higher. But when it comes to the Vulkan test, it's actually neck to neck. There's literally no difference between the two very minute differences out here. Having said that, these are still uh, synthetic benchmarks. So take these numbers with a pinch of salt because what matters the most is the real life test. And we're going to do that pretty soon. And now we come to a very, very important test, which is the CPU throttling test. And to be entirely honest, this is more about the brands and how they tune the processors uh, more than just the processors themselves. Now we run this test for 45 minutes to see how the CPU throttles after a while. Now here the Snapdragon 888 held its own very well. It throttled to only 80% of its max performance after 45 minutes of usage, whereas the Exynos 2100 throttled to 69%. Actually, there is a lot of throttling that happens on uh, Exynos-based chips after a, a particular amount of time. And I noticed that it happens after generally about 30 minutes of usage. Now for the final synthetic benchmark, we have Ant2. Uh, and you can see that Ant2 is where there is a lot of difference in scores. But the Snapdragon 888 actually scores much higher and in the 7 lakh range compared to the 6.5 lakh range achieved by Exynos 2100 on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Now this is where the difference is entirely telling. Now I have a distinctive feeling that there's something completely off with Antutu 2 testing on Exynos 2100 because obviously the fact that you know the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra that we have actually has more RAM compared to the base variant of the Mi 11 that we have. And of course, that would give you better RAM performance, memory performance for sure. But the CPU and GPU performance are drastically different compared to what we saw on the Geekbench and of course, the 3D Mark test that we saw earlier. So yeah, so these numbers seem really far apart. Having said that, all of these are synthetic benchmarks. It doesn't really matter, you know, which one comes out on top because these are numbers at the end of the day. What matters is when you are actually using the phone do you feel any throttling? When you're actually playing games, do you feel any issues? And that's where we come to the most important test of this video, where we test out the real world gaming performance of these two phones and these two processors. Now for this, we use Gamebench to log the FPS data on one of the most graphically intensive Android games out there right now, which is Genshin Impact. 
And you know what, the game actually gives you so many options to actually tweak the graphics settings. I found that the high preset with 60 FPS to be the best option. And with high and 60 FPS setting on both phones, we played the game for 30 minutes. And in the game bench test is where we can see most of the differences. And it's really, really telling. In fact, when we saw the scores, the Exynos 2100 had a better median FPS of 60 FPS compared to 59 FPS on Snapdragon 888. Now that is not a telling number. What is actually telling is the fact that the Exynos 2100 had a better FPS stability of 96% compared to 83% on, you know, the Snapdragon 888. Now that is what matters the most for gamers is that it maintain a stable frame rate all throughout your gameplay. Now heating of course was almost on par on both the phones so that's definitely not going to be a problem but yes the battery drop was slightly higher on the Exynos 2100 compared to Snapdragon 888. So yeah so this is essentially what's happening out here you get better performance better stability on the Exynos 2100 in real world gaming performance but yes slightly better battery performance on Snapdragon 888. So after looking at all the synthetic benchmarks and of course the real world gaming test that we did, are you guys slightly disappointed that Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 is not extremely powerful compared to Exynos? Actually no, you should be happy that Samsung has actually caught up and this year's Exynos phones in India actually match up in performance to Snapdragon 888. In fact, I am really surprised that a very very graphically intensive game like Genshin Impact worked really well on you know the Exynos 2100 compared to Snapdragon 888. But there's one thing to notice is that this is the first phone with Snapdragon 888 and this is Mi's first phone as well. Obviously there are other brands that are going to be making phones for example OnePlus and Asus and they could actually use the entire potential of Snapdragon 888. Having said that this is still telling benchmarks and uh, you know of course uh, the fact that it does better on Android doesn't mean much considering the daily performance is almost on par. So what did you guys think of, you know, our entire performance test? Or do you like these kind of videos? Do let us know in the comment section below. We love doing these kind of videos actually. So I hope you love it too. Until next time, this is Ashraf from My Smart Price English signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed my friends.